What is up, everybody? In today's video, we're going to be unlocking Arwen. That's right. We're going to be going through her event. We're going to talk about her ability priorities. We're going to talk about her cost. We're going to start with talking about her cost because I know that's what people are most interested in, given the data mine suggesting that she might be one of the characters necessary for Elrond. We're kind of leaning really heavy into that because all signs are pointing to that. Like they moved the elves around. They have two elves coming out very quickly. They've already leaked. Uh, more pictures about another elf in this stained glass window type thing besides Arwen, besides Elrond. So elves looking pretty, pretty much the answer. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this video. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, that, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, so here we are, and you're going to see a phantom me in the background moving behind me, and uh, that's because I hit mute when I did this video, so I need to re-record over it to actually explain what I'm going through. Uh, we got to talk about the offers first. So this is the Arwen offer, and I was taken aback when I saw this. I did not expect this at all. So 80 character shards, I think that's 20 American. It comes out to around 35 Canadian after we get uh, hit with our HST tax. Um, this is really good pricing as far as the mobile game industry goes. Now, that's not saying much because, I mean, the mobile game industry is evil. And when you think about it, this is like not even like a DLC kind of thing. This is a one new character in a bevy of other characters. You need so much more to put on this character to actually get her to a usable rate. So 20 bucks is pretty steep still. Uh, but as far as industry standards go, this is like a gift. And this is great. So in conjunction with her actual event, which is live now, which is free for all players, we're going to talk about that. You can get her to four stars for just 20 bucks American. And you get a bunch of green gear and some nominal amount of gold and training materials. It is what it is. Uh, so that, I think that as far as industry standards go, again, that's very that's very good. When coming from Marvel Strike Force, they've actually ratcheted up the greed to 11. So this was very refreshing for me to see. Another thing I really liked about this offer is the time limit on it. 34 days, 33 days and 15 hours as of recording this. That's awesome. I got to assume Elrond is going to be out by then. So this does not make you feel FOMO. And FOMO, I will not deal with another game that tries to make me have this anxiety over missing out, okay? If Elrond comes around and this offer is still up and if you buy it now, all of a sudden you will be able to because they made her firm, but you got 130 shards elsewhere, then that's great. And I think that that time limit is huge. But if you're trying to get her to five star now, you're going to be looking at this chest. Now, I have another video coming out about gold and training materials from chests like this. Uh, and these chests really suck. So this is one chest for a thousand gems. Gems are not as available as they are in other games. A thousand gems is the equivalent of what, three or four days worth of energy. Uh, for most people, it's going to be 10 days of arena payout. Like this is a lot of gems. Uh, and mostly you can kind of expect to get 17, right? There's a 70% chance you're going to get 17 shards from there. A bunch of lucky people are going to get 810, 565. And they're, oh, I won the lottery. It's crazy cool. And I'm, I'm happy for them. But for the most part, if you want to talk about what to expect in spending to get her to five star in the event that she's not actually farmable before Elrond comes, realistically, you're going to be spending 9,000 gems, okay? 70% chance for 17. I'm going to open one here. I already regretted it. I regret it even more having to rewatch it. What do I get? 17. Look, there's a 70% chance that's the drop. So if you are trying to unlock Elrond and we can kind of suspect that Arwen and Illidan will not be farmable before his release, you can expect to have to drop 9,000 gems, which is about 100 bucks plus the 20 bucks on her offer. We're talking about American dollars right now. So looking at $120 per elf to get them to five star ready for Elrond. Now you only need to do that for one elf because there's six elves, but that's kind of the that's kind of the cost for it. Uh, we're gonna see there's actually a little bit extra benefit in doing so now. We're gonna go play through the event, but I'm gonna get rid of this guy behind me because I could replay it without all this. All right, so here we go. We're actually gonna play through her event right now. And I use the word play pretty generously there. <laughs> So I think all you need to do is be level 30 to access this campaign. And then they give you characters to use on every single node. I, this bummed me out, honestly. And this is, there's two sides to this coin. One is really good. One's kind of boring, right? 
There doesn't seem to be much content in this game right now besides literally just spending money on gems or just trying to wait for your energy and slowly farming up characters with very minimal resources. So when I heard that I'd have a chance to use maybe my Isengard team on this campaign and see how they do, that excited me. I thought that was pretty cool. And then I open it up and uh, they give you five elves who have their abilities completely maxed out to try and hype the team up. So when you play with your elf team, it is not gonna operate like this. You will not have level six abilities on all your characters. I think the stats are probably super jacked up. Who knows what the stats on the goblins are because they don't actually show power levels because why wouldn't they? It's so ridiculous that they don't. That's another thing entirely. So I just, this is cool that if you're level 30, you're gonna get Arwen unlocked. Doesn't matter the size of your team. That is an absolute objectively good thing. It's also really boring, okay? Uh, that's that's all I got to say about that. So let's not waste any time watching this because literally I open the note, I hit auto. That's what I'm doing. Instead, let's go ahead and jump and talk about Arwen's kit. And we'll start by looking at the basic guarded slash. So at level one, there's a 50% chance it gives one stack of defense up, plus obviously there's damage. At level four, it goes up to 25% chance. And at level six, it goes up to 100% chance. None of my characters have a level five ability, let alone level six, which you need a special resource to use. So we're not going to talk about that. There's no reason to talk about abilities five and six unless you're super cracking the out. I will give a priority, I think, for these abilities uh, later on. So first special then. She's going to do an attack to spell one boon. At level two, she gains 20% turn meter. And level three, she gains an additional 10% turn meter per boon. So level three is definitely something you want to race to on this ability. And if we look again, we scroll down. At level six, 10% turn meter per boon again. So she can get so much speed bar using the special, depending on how many boons she has. Speed bar is king in a game like this. This is very important. But again, there's almost no reason to look at this ability because of the level six ability stuff just doesn't exist. I don't think there's enough offers to do one level on it yet. But if you are going hard on elves, I think this would be one that you look really hard and long at. This much turn bonus and a character that does hit pretty hard, has a lot of good defensive abilities, is very, very cool. Now, obviously, that's such a scarce material. You want to wait and see all the elf abilities. Uh, but this is definitely a contender there. Then there's her ultimate. I think her ultimate is fairly underwhelming. Any ability that doesn't do damage, I think, is a waste right now. The game seems to be predicated on whoever does the most damage, the fastest wins. Uh, now, this is kind of cool because it does cleanse Banes. It gives stacks of regenerations. It'll give immunity to Rivendell, cleanse more Banes. You can drop the stamina charge on it, give an additional generation to people below 50% health. But again, no attack on it. A big Azhak coming in doesn't care about your regenerations. Like, if it's not a heal then he's just going to out damage the regeneration. Maybe your character dies before they actually experience the heal from that regeneration. So I don't like her ultimate. I don't put priority on putting levels into this. But of course, if you're going hard on her, you obviously want to get this up to level four as soon as you can, because it does do things. It does things. I don't know if you'll ever use the ability, but it does things in case you need to, I don't know, cleanse some banes. Then there's her passive. Her passive is really important. I think this is going to be a big part of her plug and play uh, adventure. So when a squad member drops below 50% health, grant one stack of nimble at level one, it's supposed to be 50% chance to grant one stack of nimble. I think the text is just missing from LOTR.GG. Uh, at level two, you get an additional 25% chance and at level four, always grant nimble. So this is a very impactful ability. You definitely want to race this ability to level four. Super high priority on that one. And at level five, she gains extra damage. Level six, squad members that are light, 50% chance to cleanse one Bane from them. Not a huge deal there. Uh, so if I was to rank these as far as priority goes, I do think the first thing I'm doing is getting her special up to level three. So she's getting that extra turn meter per boon. I'm then getting the ultimate, or sorry, the passive up to level four so that she's always giving nimble out. That's very important to keep characters from dying. You know, they go below 50% life and all of a sudden they're dodging the next attacks. That's huge. Then I want to get the basic to level four. I just want to. And then I'm done doubling back to the special to get that to level four, giving me the 30% damage. And finally, I'll turn my attention to the ultimate and get that up to level four. Now, will you do it in that exact order? Will you leave the ultimate at level one the whole time while you're getting everything else done? Probably not, because the cost to do it is so much smaller, right? Uh, but anyway, that's her abilities. And she also has kind of a hidden one. Um, 
When an Isengard squad member inflicts a Bane, heal all squad members. I'm not even sure if this is like an active thing in the game yet. Kind of interesting, though. I digress. So that that's her abilities, guys. Start with the special, head on over the passive, then the basic, then the ultimate. And I do think she's going to have some good plug and play value. Now, let's talk about that real quick. Um, she has the support tag. I think that's very, very important for her. Uh, she does function without those level six abilities, though they do do a lot to help her. But with that support tag into the uh, wondrous abilities challenges, I think she's going to be necessary to get through that right now. I can show you in game. Actually, I am uh, at the highest difficulty for it. And I can tell you that last wave with those Elrond team, that's nuts. And I do think the nimble from her passive plus the defense up from her basics is going to be very important to actually get the three star on that. So we're getting more of those purple ability materials and we're able to get our teams built up higher. So I do think she's going to have great plug and play value in the challenges. As far as arena goes, I think she's going to have good use on offense because her ultimate kind of feels like a wasted turn and she's using it, I believe, turn one. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it at all. Or maybe it's when she's level five, she's using it turn one. I don't know. But I don't like her ultimate. I don't think she's going to be great on defense. But on offense, I think she'll be good. So that's it for the abilities and kind of the plug and play usage. Let's talk about the final the final node of this campaign. So it requires the five star Arwen. We kind of talked about that. You'll need to buy that 20 US dollar offer for sure for the 80 shards and then probably spend 9000 gems, which is roughly $100. So you're looking at $120 to be able to do this tier six node. But you get some goodies. So you do get this level six ability material. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it. I don't know how much you need per level because I have no character that has a level five ability yet to see what level six costs. Uh, but it's there. So it exists in game. Is that enough to get that uh, special done on her? So she's getting that extra turn bonus. I don't know. Uh, but again, $120. But again, a 500,000 gold, 250 experience, 250K experience. It That's a lot of resources. And this almost lets you bring her up to the usable level minus the gear. Obviously, you still need to get your own gear. Uh, but that much resources, so $120. Basically, you have the usable character at that point. You have the character at five stars ready to go for your Eldron unlock. Kind of, kind of a lot better than most mobile game industry standards. Um, I'm not doing it. Too rich for my blood still. I'm enjoying the game, but not that much. I've already spent way too much money on it. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about Arwen. How did you like her unlock? Was it a little disappointing because it was boring to you? What do you think about her kit? All the turn bonus that she's getting, the control, the, the support from the defense up and the nimble. I really like that stuff. Uh, how do you think about that? And, and what do you think about the price tag associated with characters in this game? This is the first character release, so I'm excited or or maybe apprehensive to hear what you guys are thinking about that. But let me know your thoughts in the comment sections below. And as always, have a great day. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.